Welcome to Wildlife Quest. There's a way to make an entrance. This is my destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Vili today. This season, we are in the KwaZulu-Natal region of South Africa at the Pinda Reserve. Dedicated to ethnically managed and sustainable environments for African wildlife, this reserve started in 1991 means return to the wild. Join Anga Makabalo, Ranger Bruce Hedges, and me, Brittany Bristow, as we go on safari in search of some of the world's most endangered animals and their babies. Today we're searching for hippopotamus. Oh! Whoa! Is that a crocodile? <laughs> that thing will gobble that you up. Eat you in one bite. Uh, that thing was massive. <laughs> that monster will gobble you up. And they have really <laughs> strong jaws. Like they can lock you in there. Anyone keen for a swim? <laughs> I'm good. Funny, but no. No. Did you see that thing? That um, is huge. I'm yeah. not kidding anyway. Wow. OK. In fact, it'll make me feel better if we just drive off. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not comfortable. There's a pot of hippos. Hippos are the most hostile creatures in the world. They kill more people per year in Africa than any other animal. Guys, this is one of the most dangerous sightings we've seen this far. Hippos are incredibly, incredibly dangerous animals. As you can see, one is opening its mouth right now. That's to show its dominance. So you'll see one will open its mouth and then another and another, trying to figure out who's, who's the strong one. They're so, so intimidating. They can grow between 12 and 15 feet in length. Their tusks, their lower tusks, when they open up, you can see, can grow over a foot long. Hippos spend most of their days submerged in water and can hold their breaths underwater for more than five minutes. If you look very carefully, you'll see that their nose, ears, and eyes are all at the top of the water. This allows them to see, hear, and smell. Three of the most vital senses. Hippos are incredibly territorial animals. It's why they're so dangerous. And they're the third largest land mammal. This is rather dangerous, and one looks like it might actually come for us. So I'm thinking we should get back in the car, like right now. <laughs> they can run from the water to the land in no time. Every now and then, they'll have a little outburst and sort of attack each other and you know, make, make the noise that hippos make. Watch, they're going to get frisky now. Oh, look, look, look. Getting worked up a little bit. We are really close to these hippos. If they want to run at us, we will be gone. And they don't stop if they run at something. They don't really mock charge things. They can easily outrun humans, reaching speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. And their jaws are so powerful, they can bite a crocodile, even a small fishing boat in half, with a single bite. They're also the noisiest creatures in Africa. Some of their vocalizations have been measured at 115 decibels. That's the noise you would hear at a loud concert. Is he watching us? They're definitely aware of us. Did you know that hippos' lips are two feet across and they can open their mouths four feet wide? The word hippopotamus comes from the ancient Greek for river horse. They have hooves at the end of their toes and actually gallop underwater. It's interesting how they rest their heads on each other's backs. They have to sleep during the day because they leave the pond for about six hours every night to feed. 
They travel as far as five miles and eat up to 150 pounds of grass per night. It's hard to believe the hippo's closest living relatives are whales and dolphins. As you can tell, it's starting to rain pretty hard out here, but I'm guessing the hippo doesn't mind so much. Yeah, it keeps popping up and down the water. Um, I'm guessing it's probably to establish whether we're a threat or not, but I don't think he has to worry because we won't be going in water anytime soon. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's a giant. Yo! Jeez, that would have been bad. It's really rainy. The buffalo are just arriving for a drink. They don't seem to mind the rain. Buffalo and hippos share the same grazing areas, so it's not uncommon to see them so close together. Some kind of new animal. We're, we're not quite sure what it is. Oh, oh, it's a person. <laughs> We're going to head back to the lodge now. It's freezing cold out here today. We just spotted a monitor lizard. They have forked tongues, similar to snakes, which they use to detect odors and find food. It looks like a small dragon, doesn't it? It has such powerful claws. I'm not sure if she's looking for food or a place to lay her eggs. Did you know that their diet is composed of mostly crocodile eggs? It can go up to five feet long. That's a pretty long lizard. Hey, look at the bird, it's walking on water. Oh, that's called an African jacana, otherwise known as a lily trotter. What they do is they walk with their toes on the lily pads and it looks like they're walking on water. Wow, that's pretty cool. This afternoon, we're going to a school close to the reserve. We'll see you there. about Pinda's commitment to the three C's, care for the land, care for the people, and care for the animals. Well, today we're in Mobogazi at the Ngomo Full Service School. Pinda has helped build 104 classrooms and an Orphans and Vulnerable Children's Care Center. Well, let's go inside and meet the principal. Hi. Um, it's Principal Namusa Zakali, right? Oh, yes, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. This is a beautiful school you have. Oh, thank you. Can I show you around? That Maybe would be wonderful. Okay. Yes, yeah, thank go. you. Thanks. This school began under a tree in 1997 with 60 students. Today, there are nearly a thousand students. Most of those children are orphaned and vulnerable. Here, they receive food, clothing, and emotional support. We help them with the homeworks. We have a center, uh, we give them meals, we give them school uniform. Um, we started this as teachers helping individual children, mm -hmm. but and beyond came in again. They introduced NOAA's ARC. NOAA is an organization that looks after orphaned and vulnerable children. So with NOAA, we, uh, we were able to employ some of the community youth children. So we have an art manager there with a cooker who cooks for the children and with a cleaner. Wow. Yes. They also have a program here to provide fresh drinking water to the local community. This is very important because there is limited access to water that is sanitized and safe for human consumption. This is how my grandparents used to carry water from the river all the way to the village. 
it'll be empty by the time I get home. <laughs> I think I'll just use a hose pipe. <laughs> Part of Pinda's commitment to the community are these hippo water rollers which can carry 90 litres of water. Now, you can safely roll it home without spilling a single drop. I think I'd just rather do that. The Hippo water roller was invented by two South African engineers and was designed to eliminate the problem of women having to carry small but very heavy buckets on their heads. The containers hold 90 litres, enabling families to have larger supplies of safe drinking water. This is important considering that nearly one and a half million children die each year from waterborne diseases. Before we head out to search for hippos this morning, we're going to be meeting with another ranger who's going to teach us some tracking skills. Maybe we'll even see some hippos along the way. You can sometimes spot them grazing very early in the mornings. Okay guys, this is Giles, one of the senior rangers. And he's going to be teaching you bush skills for today. Cool. Hi, Giles. Cool. I'm Anga. Very nice to meet you, Nice Anger. to meet you, too. Hi, Brittany. Hello, Brittany. I'm nice Giles. to meet you. This is Safisa. Cheers. Hi, Hi. Anga. Good to see you again, Safisa. Good to see you again. <laughs> Brilliant. So I think we'll go for a little walk if you'd like to do so. Cool. Cool. What are we going to be learning? Well, I think Safisa and I might teach you a little bit about tracking um, and maybe some awareness of the, the bush. Keep cool. us safe out there. Awesome. Nice. Now, before we go, do you mind me asking why you're carrying a rifle? It's for safety purposes. You know, we're walking in the bush with some potentially dangerous animals, mm -hmm. and if we're not aware of the surroundings, then they might react badly to that. Have you ever had to use it before? We've never used a rifle in the oh, bush good. before, so you shouldn't have to worry. Okay, oh. so like if lions decide to attack us or anything? We'd be sure to throw you to them <laughs> first. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Brilliant. Should we go? Yeah, yeah sure. sounds great. Bye, Bye, Bruce. Bye. Cheers, Bruce. Awareness is one of the most important skills that you can have in the bush. It keeps you alive, especially when you're walking around. Some fresh buffalo tracks that we're just oh, following cool. here. Sophie's just spotted them. Wow. You can quite clearly see. Yeah, They're very well big. defined. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, cool. So you've got to take note of all the signs in the bush, because yeah. otherwise it can be potentially dangerous oh, okay. walking around. Look at these guys. This is a buffalo down. <laughs> it's looking fairly fresh and it's warm as well. Ew. I think they're heading towards a dam somewhere here. If we can try follow them up, it's going to be interesting. Okay, let's go. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> smell so They know we're here even though they can't see us. I wonder what they're thinking when they're staring at us like that. <laughs> picking up our scent. The one on the far right is male. You can tell by the thickness of his horns. This one is very old. It looks like he's enjoying himself.
They remind me of elephants. When one or two starts to move away, they all follow, but they're much more dangerous. By some estimations, they kill close to 500 people in Africa every year. I wonder if Buffalo ever get this close to the lodge. It's a little unnerving, especially since they're sometimes referred to as Black Death or Widowmakers. They stalk, mob, and kill more big game hunters than any other animal in Africa. That walk with the trackers this morning was awesome. I'm really glad we had an opportunity to experience it. I was really hoping to spot some of the hippos out of the water, though. But then again, that's when they're most dangerous to humans. They will chase and kill anything that's between them and the water. We're heading out on our afternoon game drive. And I really hope we get to see a hippo. Hippo. <laughs> Let's go. There are so many places animals can hide, and they're more likely to see or hear us before we see them. I wouldn't want to walk around out here, even with an experienced tracker. Leopards are the scariest because they hide up in the trees. There are some hippos in the pond just up ahead. We're gonna drive around to see if we can get a little closer. I'd love to see a baby hippo. Did you know that hippos have red sweat, which acts as a natural sunblock? Interesting. I wish I had natural sunblock. <laughs> I probably need it. <laughs> There's baby one. Baby hippos are too short to rest their feet on the ground, so what they'll do is they'll rest their chins on their mother's backs to stay up. Did you know hippos are born underwater? The mother nudges it to the surface to catch its first breath. Then it closes its nose, folds its ears, and submerges to nurse. There's a golden orb spider. It's beautiful. There's another really small spider in the web. That's the male. The female is about two inches long with a leg span of an additional eight inches. That's nearly six times larger than the male. Females will often attack, kill, and eat the males when they attempt to mate. That's why the males have to be patient and wait until the female is busy eating something she has caught in her web. Wow, he's massive. Did you know that a hippo's milk is pink? Kinda looks like a strawberry milkshake. The birds you see here are yellow weavers. They like to nest in trees above the water. The male has several partners and will build as many as 25 nests. When a female selects one of the nests to lay her eggs, she'll line it with soft feathers and grass. They look like beehives, don't they? Looks like he's finishing off another nest. They're so beautiful. <laughs> it's really hot right now, so the hippos are staying below the water as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> 
There's a marabou stork. Those baby geese are so cute. There's something out there. It's crocodiles. Hippos have to share the same ponds with crocodiles, but they don't like them because they're a threat to their babies. Crocodiles are vicious and strong. They have 68 very sharp teeth and can bite down with a force of 5,000 pounds per square inch. That's the strongest bite of any animal. They're keeping an eye on those Egyptian geese. Crocodiles can move very quickly and quietly to sneak up on their prey. It's swimming towards the geese. She sees the crocodile. They're all scrambling to get away. fascinating to see so much wildlife in one spot. There's another crocodile. If you look closely, you'll see its mouth is wide open. It looks like it's waiting for one of those geese to get close enough to grab. The hippos seem more concerned about us at the moment. They seem to be getting closer and making snorting sounds. Yeah, those snorting noises are actually warning sign. So my guess is if they're getting closer and snorting, they probably think that we're a little bit too close and would rather we got out of here. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, me too. We should probably leave these hippos. Yeah, there we go. Yep, we yeah. should leave. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> there are only 150,000 common hippos left in the world. That represents a 20% decline during the last decade. Their major threat is from humans who often kill them for their ivory teeth. It's been a long, great day here at Pinda. And we hope you enjoyed seeing baby animals, people, and places with us. Until next time. I'm Anga Makubalo. And I'm Brittany Bristow. Bye.